Hello everyone and welcome to Setup Admin Features Training. My name is Emma Oyapuska and I will be your host today. Uh, my job here at Setup is Customer Success Manager, which means that my mission is to make sure that all of our users are happy with Setup and that they get the most out of it. Today's agenda is to go through the admin features of Seidat. So we will not dig in too much to the what Seidat uh, is in everyday use. We are more gonna go through of what Seidat is from admin point of view. So the agenda is here. First, we're gonna go through team and user management. So basically how to invite team members and which kind of access level you should give to them. Then we're going to go through content management. So how to set up your SEDA team so that it matches your brand. We're going to do that with uh, brand settings, image bank and smart slides. Then lastly, we're going to go through analytics. So with analytics, you can see who are watching your presentations, how many times your shared links have been opened and what you can do with automations. Uh, we're going to begin with very short introduction to Seidat in general, just in case you have never used Seidat before, so you get an idea of what it really is. Seidat is a sales platform where you can have all your sales and marketing materials in one place. Sometimes people say that Seidat is, Seidat is kind of like Google Slides or PowerPoint. We are kind of like that, but we are also much more. With Seidat, you can create materials, whatever materials you like. It can be sales decks, it can be marketing materials, guides, whatever you have in PowerPoint or PDF format or any other format you might think of. Uh, you can also present with Seidat. So right now I am sharing my present presentation with you with uh, screen share. But I could also be sharing the same presentation to you without having any screen share. You can do that simply with a link. So basically, all the material is online and it is also presentable online without any screen share. If you're more interested in how to present uh, say that materials and how to share them, uh, I suggest that watch user training webinar. That is a webinar where we go through more of the everyday use how to share materials how to create simple slides and how to present them with say that you can also share the materials very easily so normally you're probably used to sharing uh, offers and other kind of uh, sales decks with pdf format from now on you can forget the email attachments you send everything with a link and you will also know if your customer is opening the link that you just sent to them. This is something you cannot do with PDFs. Uh, we'd say that you can also analyze the materials. If you want, you can see opening information already from the app, but if you want to dig in deeper, you can also attach Google Analytics and other kind of analytics tools to see which slides are performing best. We have also e-sign features. So basically you can use say that as an offer machine with offers that you can sign electronically. We try to co uh, enable collaboration. And how we do this is by having everything in one place. Basically, you have one platform where you have your salespeople and your marketing people. You have the people there. Of course, you will have all the necessary materials that they will be using in their daily work. So let's forget about having just sales decks. We are using so much more material in all of our sales processes. So why won't we have them in the same place? Usually these materials are utilizing same slides with each other. So maybe you always have the same cover page. Maybe you have your reference stories in each, the each of the materials that you send out to your customers. Now, when they're in SEDAT, you can utilize all the same materials in one place and combine them with each other. We're going to go through a centralized material management today. And this is something that the admin people in Seidat or the admin users in Seidat are mostly interested in. And how we do centralized ma material management is 
by one, having all the material in the same place, but also by having same material in thousands of presentations that are manageable from one place. We do that with these features. So firstly, brand settings. This is how you set up your brand to your SEDA team. So all the presentations anyone creates there are visually according to your brand image. Then image bank in SEDA, all the users use the same images. So you can be sure that all of your salespeople are using good quality pictures that the marketing people or any other people who are responsible have picked out for them. Of course, salespeople can add their own pictures, but admin people will know. Then we also have smart slides. Smart slides are centrally manageable slides. So basically you can have one slide in multiple places at once. Uh, I'm going to go through smart slides in a bit bigger form uh, a bit later. And then we also have iframes. Iframes are basically websites that you in, uh, embed to your slide. So for example, if on your website you have a pricing page that is changing every day, you can embed that page into your say that slide and of course every time you update the website it will be updated on the slide too and as you can see here we have two different presentations and these all have some of the similar slides some of the similar images or iframes that is how you in a big picture centrally manage your presentations in say that uh say that how to uh, set up your brand in say that is by doing brand management so first before we dig into deeper on content management we're gonna see how to set up your brand in say that so basically to make sure that everybody is using the same fonts same colors as what you have thought that your brand should look like then we have the smart slides. So in say that you have two different kinds of slides, you have normal slides and then you have smart slides. The difference between these two slides is that smart slide can be used in hundreds of presentations at once. This means that once you edit the smart slide in one presentation and click save, then the changes will be seen in all of these hundred presentations where this specific slide was used. Usually smart slides are, for example, company numbers. So today we have a revenue of 5 million. Maybe next year we have a revenue of 6 million. It would be nice to update it from one place to all the presentations that our salespeople are using. Well, we'd say that it's very easy to do with smart slides. Uh, the analytics and the automations and other integrations that we support are basically here. So if you don't see the logo you're looking for, most likely it is still possible. But how we do this is by you can uh, have your Google Analytics, Universal Analytics code in your SEDA theme, and it will automatically track all the slide openings and slide page views to your Google Analytics. You can also use Google Tag Manager to have other kinds of analytics in your SEDA theme. So for example, Lead Feeder, uh, HubSpot, whatever is the place where you want to gather the data to. And then we have Open API. So if you want, you can create automations yourself, but we also support Sabir. So if you don't have any tech knowledge, you are still able to create automations easily with SEDA and maybe your CRM, for example. First, we're going to go through the team management. So team management in say that means that you will have multiple users in one team and you can set different access levels for each user. What access levels means in a big picture, it looks like this. I know this slide might be a bit confusing, uh, but you will find all this material in the presentation that I'm going to send you afterwards. So don't pay too much attention now and then dig into this slide a bit later. But the idea is that with different uh, access levels, you can manage who can do what. Who can change the fonts in your say that brand setting? Who can edit normal slides? Who can edit smart slides? Uh, I'm going to go to say that right now. So I'm going to log into the app and show how to manage the users in the app. 
here we have our Seda demo team. Don't get confused if you see some Finnish language er <laughs> there and there. I have not translated all the content to English, but hopefully you will understand what everything means. Uh, now, if I want to access the users page and manage my users, I would go here, users. In this list, I see every single user I have in my Seda team. We have two different kinds of access level uh, levels <clears throat> that you have in Seda. Uh, the first batch is here, so admin rights, and then the second batch is here, which means editing rights. Uh, admin rights means that these people can manage your Seda administration stuff. So basically, owners and admins can edit billing information, see the API keys, they can invite people, they can delete users, they can do all that kind of administration tasks. The difference between admins and owners is that admins cannot see hidden presentations. In Seda, you can hide presentations from all the other users in your team if you like, but the owners will always be able to see them if they like. Usually owner and admin rights are not given to normal salespeople who don't need them. It's usually one or two people who have these rights because not that many people need the access to billing settings and so on. Then the second batch. So these are editing rights. These here determine what the user can do in terms of presentations. So let's start from the uh, lowest rights. So no rights users. These are users that can be, for example, resellers. When they log into your SEDA team with no rights access level, they cannot by default see any presentations. You can still give them access to, for example, one or two presentations that they might need. So these are people outside of your company. Then we have viewer rights. People with viewer rights can log into the Seda team, see all the presentations, scroll through them, but nothing else. So they cannot present the presentations, they cannot send them out with a link to anybody else. Then we have sharers. Sharers can log into the team, see all the presentations, they can present them, and they can send them with a link to anyone. But they cannot edit anything. So basically, they cannot create presentations, they cannot edit any existing presentations, they cannot import anything from PowerPoint and so on. They are there just to present and share. Usually, sharers, viewers are for uh, management people who don't really create presentations themselves, but really need access to presentations every now and then, and maybe sometimes present them. Then uh, the second three uh, access levels that we have have the CM in brackets. It means content manager. So these three user access levels can edit presentations. The lowest of them is editor rights. With editor rights, you can create presentations, you can edit existing presentations and import presentations from PowerPoint. But if the presentation has smart slides in it, you cannot edit the smart slides. So you can use the smart slides, but you cannot edit the content that they have. Then we have smart slide editor who can do everything that editor can, but they can all, all also edit the smart slides. So these people have more responsibility on how the centrally managed content looks like. Then the highest that we have, the highest access level is brand manager. Uh, brand manager can do everything that the smart slide editor can, but they can also change the brand settings. So these people are responsible for having the right fonts and right colors in your brand settings. Uh, you can select the right access level when you invite new people. Invitation happens from checking here, invite users, you add their email, and then you select the access level. If you want, you can then later also give them less or more rights by clicking on the three dots and then selecting the right amount of rights. Again, admins and owners are the only ones who can change access levels or invite or delete users. All right, 
Uh, that's about uh, user settings and user or team management. I'm going to tell you right now that if you are hesitating between sharing rights and editor rights when you have salespeople in your team, I suggest that you give them editor rights. Usually uh, you come from PowerPoint or Google Slides world and where there the salespeople are used to having editing rights. They can type the customer's name in the slide if they like, and they can do edits to the slides that you have given to them. But if you add them to say that with sharing rights, they are like, hmm, why, do you, why don't you let me edit my own uh, offers anymore? And then they might stop using say that. And that is not something that we want as you now have a platform for everybody. So I suggest that every time you're hesitating between sharing and editing rights, give them editing rights. Then we're going to go through content management. Content management happens with brand settings that we're going to check first, and then smart slides. We're also going to go through image bank after smart slides. I'm hopping back to the app. And here we're going to start by setting up the brand settings. So when you start uh, using Seirat, your brand uh, page looks pretty much similar as mine looks right now. So if I scroll down, I am able to see all these different fonts here. What these are, are the textiles that your users can use in Seirat. So for example, if your uh, sales guy wants to use Comic Sans, they do not find that font from here. They cannot use it. So brand manager needs to be sure that here you can find all the text sizes, colors, and the fonts that your users will need to use. If you're starting with our uh, plan in like, or if you have started like in the past year, your brand settings will look like this. These are the default brand settings that we have. And if they don't match your brand, please personalize them so that they match your brand. How to do that is by checking the textiles here and then checking the right font, right color, and maybe change the font size if needed. So for example, if you guys don't use Oswald as a title font, you click on the font name and then select another one. What this does is that now every presentation that has this title 80 extra bold uh, font in them will now have Lato font. So as we can see from the preview, the first font doesn't remind the second font anymore at all because I changed the font. So everything you do in the brand settings will always immediately affect the existing presentations. If you want to remove fonts from here, it will not remove any text that you have on the slide. Instead, it will change that text into your default text style. So for example, if you have titles written with title 80 extra bold font, and you would click remove from here, all those titles would become this. So as we can see here, the default text is blue. It means that this is your selected default font. And this is open sans, that is black, and the size is 20. Not the text will be removed, but it might look a bit weird. The font sizes in say that are measured with pixels instead of points. So be mindful of this if you are importing your presentations from PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, uh, the font size is in points. So for example, 100 points is not 100 pixels. There's a lot of free converters online. So if you choose Google PT to PX, you will find one free one to use. If you don't see the font that you want in here, uh, you can contact, contact us through chat or support at seda.com and then we can add the font that you want. All Google fonts are available. Adobe fonts we can also add. It just means that we need a, a little bit of help from you there. And then if you have a font that is not Google font nor Adobe font, 
you can still have the font in your SEDA theme. It just means that we have to uh, host it online. All right, then we have the color palette. Here we have our brand colors. And what these mean here is that they will make it easier for your users to select your brand fonts when they create new material. So if you change this pink color to be something else, it won't do anything to the existing presentations, but it will help your users to select the red color differently next time. So basically, if I would here create a new presentation and start from a blank slide and add a shape to there, let's select the round shape here. And now when I select, select the shape color, I have the color palette here. So now for me as a basic user, it is very easy for me to select the right font that is according to our brand guidelines. Well, as you can see, my slide background here is uh, pink. It is not white as normally. It is because I have also set a default slide background color in my brand settings. So what this means is that every time somebody creates a blank slide, it will have this as the default color. Of course, anybody can change the background color afterwards, but by default, it will be this. Next up, we're going to move to smart slides. So now that you have your brand set up in setup, you have your own fonts, uh, right colors and everything there, we can be sure that all the presentations look visually exactly like your brand. But if you want to also centrally manage the content that is on the slide, so the text and the images, we go to smart slides. So right here, we can see all the smart slides that we have in this SEDA theme. And as you can see, this slide, the solution slide, has been used in 26 presentations. If I click this, I can even see which of the presentations it has been used. And now, how the centrally managing happens is that you go here, click Edit Smart Slide, it will notify you that, hey, this is used in 26 presentations. Are you sure you want to edit it? Yes, I am sure. And now every single change I make to this slide will be shown in those 26 presentations where this smart slide has been used. So for example, if I move these uh, title texts to the right and then click on save and go back, you can see that in here, it will take a second before it uh, before it, we can see the thumbnail change. But now in all these 26 presentations, the titles are on the right. If you're creating new materials and you don't want to make any mistakes, you are scared that maybe your salespeople are going to kill you if you're going to accidentally save an unfinished smart slides, you can also start creating them in peace and then later merge those smart slides together. So it works so that you have this uh, presentation here. You could also hide this presentation if you want to really work in peace, but we're not going to do it right now. And I'm going to click edit presentation and then add the smart slides that I want to edit from the slide bank. So I click here and now it opens the smart slide bank here. This was the, uh, the smart slide that I want to edit. I'm going to insert the copy and insert it again. So now I have the same slide here twice. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on the three little dots on top of the slide and then unlink smart slide. Then I will make the changes to this slide. So now I have what I used to have in this this smart slide and I can start creating a new face or new information to this slide. And I don't have to be scared that I will make updates to any other presentations. I'm going to start by, for example, changing the background to just the plain color. And then this blue box will be pink box from now on. Now, let's say that this is the brand change that we wanted to make for the next year. I'm going to click save and then I go back 
to the matrix. So I click edit presentation from the left and I can see these two slides here again. Now, as we can see, this slide doesn't have the white little triangle and the change uh, icon on the lower corner. It means that this is not the smart slide yet. But if I want to make it a smart slide, I would click on the three dots click make smart slide and now I have two smart slides. This doesn't do anything for the existing presentations but if I want to update this new smart slide to be uh, on each presentation where this uh, smart slide was used I would go back to the smart slide bank find both of them so I'm gonna search with the solution and now we have okay we have a copy here also but now we have here the new one and the old one and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click here on the top right corner and select both of these slides and now i want to merge these so i want to make sure that this slide is everywhere where this slide has been used as i have them selected i click on replace all and now it asks me which one do I want to end up having in the future too. So if I want that this slide will be everywhere where the other slide was used, I'm going to click that and then replace all. Now, as we can see, this new the solution slide is used in 27 presentations. So this is how you centrally update million presentations at a time. And also, if you happen to have these duplicates here, for example, by accident, you can just also go ahead and merge all of these together. So then you don't have any copies and you will be sure that all the information is always up to date. All right, uh, that's about smart slides. As you can see that here we have some tags, some names and languages and so on. This is how this is how you can uh, filter out your smart slides and make sure that you can easily find them from the slide bank. So, for example, this references slide is in English language. It has the English tag. I could add now to the the solution slide that I just created a new tag. I do it simply by clicking here, no tags added, and then English. And let's say that this was uh, sales sales related slides so i will click sales there too now it's for for me it's easier to find but also for our users when they create new presentations and they want to find a specific smart slide they can use the tagging here in the slide bank too so now if i go and click english i will only get english uh, slides very simple uh Next up about uh, content management, we're going to go to image bank. So in the image bank, we have folder system. So no tags here, but folders. It is very simple. You have your folders here where you put the images that you want to use on your slides. Now, if I want to upload new pictures to my image bank, I just click on the upload button and then track and drop uh, the files that I want to this view. You can also click here and then select uh, the needed, needed documents from your uh, computer. And if you fast want to add a image, you can also access the image bank uploader straight from uh, the slide. So if you, if for example, I know screenshots is something that a lot of us add to our slides, uh, I could just simply create a screenshot right now. This will not be a nice one. I have it now on my clipboard. Then I'm going to click here on this uploader and command V. If we have Windows computer, then it's control V. And now we have the screenshot that I just created. If I want to edit it, I have simple editing features in Zadup too. So you can make this uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, <laughs> screenshot uh, to be round by se uh, selecting circle here and then cropping it to be round. There's 
not need nothing else other than cropping features in C8. So if you need to edit your images, for example, to be black and white or add contrast and so on, you have to do that outside C8. All right. Uh, if I want to add images from anywhere else other than my computer, I also have other possibilities here. So, for example, if you store all your images in Google Drive, you just connect your Google Drive to your setup, and then it's easy to add them from there. In the image bank, you can also merge uh, your images the same way as you merge smart slides. So, for example, if we go to our logos and you can see that here we have two different kind of say that logos and somebody makes a decision that we will never ever use the logo that doesn't have our text anywhere we could just merge these two images together and after that in every slide where this logo has been used we would have this one that has the text on it how to do that is by clicking both of the pictures while having a comment or a control button down. Now I have selected both of them and then I will click replace from here and then select the image that I want to stay. So if I want all of these images to be replaced with this image, I click on that and then replace all. Now everywhere where we had the logo without the text, you will see this logo that has the text on it. If you want to be sure that none of the, your users are using an old logo or some, uh, for example, reference logo that you're not supposed to be using, you can also find all that information from image info. So here you can see that this one was used in one slide. Okay, no problem. Image Bank. Uh, we'll create a powerpoint import folder for all the images that you import from powerpoint so if you are importing your materials from powerpoint i suggest that go through these folders and then click on these buttons and then either delete them if they're not used on the slide anymore or then replace them so that the centrally managed uh, content is still easy to manage if you have duplicate pictures it's always of course way harder to manage the content that you have in your data team all right uh that's everything about content management after this we're gonna go through presentation management so basically how you put your presentations in order for each of your users in say that we do not have a folder system on the dashboard so on the front page instead we have something better and that is tags so tags is usually a bit unfamiliar concept but i'm going to show you how it's better than having folders the idea of tags is that none of your presentations will ever go hidden in somebody's folder and you don't have to click on 70 clicks before you find a presentation that you need. Usually uh, the tags that you add to your SEDA theme should be, for example, usernames. So, for example, salespeople will all have their name there. Uh, use cases. So sales presentation, offer materials, marketing materials, and so on. And also, if you're creating uh, la multiple language content, then have also language codes there. Of course, depending on your situation, you might have, for example, product groups there too. Now, tags can be found on the SEDAP dashboard. So I go back to presentations. And normally, and if everybody sees all the same presentations on the front page. If I want to search something from here, I can, of course, use the search bar. But for me, it's easier to find my own presentations by clicking on my name. So now I click on Emma. I see all the presentations that are mine. So basically, the presentations that I create. Now, how do you get these DAX here on the front page? Firstly, you have to be brand manager in order to add uh more tags for all the team to use and if you want to edit the name of the tag you also have to be brand manager we're going to start by clicking on the tag icon here on the right corner and then 
we are going to move down, scroll down, all the way down, and click Edit Tags. Now, from here, you can add more tags, you can edit the existing tags, and then delete the tags if needed. Why I have this little uh, point here, I don't know what this is called in English, so I'm sorry, but let's go with point. So why I have it here and why I have numbers on in front of the languages is because tags are always in alphabetical order. So if you want to put your tags in groups, you should add some sort of a sign or maybe a number in front of them, and then it will group them together. All right. We also have here team tag defaults. What I have here is English Finnish sales company proposals, agreements, and marketing. This means that every time I have a new user joining my SEDA team, these are the tags that they will have on their dashboard, dashboard pinned. So they will have these tags right here. Also, if I would have selected some of these tags, so for example, English and sales, it means that when a new user or existing user logs in, they will have these two tags selected. So basically, if I would now join in after creating uh, the de tag defaults, I would have English and sales uh, selected. So I would only see sales presentations that are written in English. Now, if I want to have these tags on my dashboard, I personally have to open the tag selector here and pin them on my front page. Pinning happens by going to this, uh, seeing the tag that you would like to pin there and then clicking on the bin. Now I have company here. Every single user needs to pin their own favorite tags to their dashboard. This is not something that you can do centrally for all the users by once. You can only select the tags that they will have once they first log in, but after that, they have to make the changes, changes by themselves. Now, why, why tags are better than uh, folders, I'm going to now show it in uh, show a demonstration of how it works. So now, if I would have folders here and I would like to find uh, English uh, sales presentation, and I know that Tim is our international sales manager, so Tim has those presentations. I would probably first go click on the Tim folder, then sales folder, and then English folder. So there's already like too many clicks for me. But now, if I want to find Tim's English sales presentations, I first click Tim. Now I see all Tim's presentations. Then English. Now I see Teams presentations that are in English. And then if I click Sales, I see all of these presentations are sales presentations. Now, if I would like to see Teams sales presentations that are written in Finnish, I would just unclick the English one and click Finnish. As we can see, Team doesn't create any Finnish materials. But who does? It's me. I have uh, Emma's presentations that are written in Finnish language and have the sales tag on them. So this is how you easily filter all the presentations at once. You can search for any presentation and find them easily. How to add tags, you ask easily. So once you create a new presentation, it will ask you to add tags here. So once you're creating, you a new presentation before the presentation is created, you can add tags. Same goes with PowerPoint import. So here you can add the tags that you want to have in your imported presentation. If you forgot about that, no worries. You can always add the tags beforehand. So I go to the presentation settings by clicking on edit presentation and then the settings. Here, we don't have any tags, so I'm just going to click here. Let's say that this was a proposal, for example, and it was my presentation and it was written in English, although it didn't have any text, I guess. But if it would have, it would have been in English. So now, once again, on the front page with Emma, I can also now see my new beautiful presentation with one little circle on it. All right. How to enforce tags? You just tell your people to add them 
so that it makes it easier for them in the future to use SEDA. That can be a bit of a pain in the first, first uh, logins for your users, but once they start using them from the beginning, it will be easy in the future too. So I, I think I cannot distress enough how important it is to make sure that your tags are uh, updated from the beginning of use of SEDA. As you saw, it's a bit hard right now to add the tags later on. So you rather not do that. You just do it from the beginning. So you will never have this problem in your life again. Now, as I told you already beforehand, uh, you can also hide presentations from each other. So normally everybody sees all the presentations that you have in your SEDA theme on the front page or the dashboard. And if you want to create presentations in peace and be sure that your colleague doesn't see it, you can uh, change the access level of a specified presentation. So for example, if this presentation that I just created is should be hidden because it's so ugly, uh, I would click on these two guys here, presentation access, and now I can edit the access level. By default, all presentations that you create have maximum team access. This means that in your team, all the users that have editing rights can edit this presentation. All the users that have sharing rights can share this presentation. Viewing rights can view this presentation. And if you want to hide it all together, you click on no access hidden. Now it means that by default, nobody will see this presentation uh, but you. If you want to create a presentation together with your colleague, but hide it from everybody else, you can add other users to this presentation too. So I'm going to add my colleague Evert here and give him not editor, but sharing rights. Now it means that from my whole team, this presentation is hidden, but I can edit it and Evert can share it. So Evert cannot do any uh, changes to the presentation content itself, but he can share it to other people and see the content what is there. Now, as I click update permissions, you can see that these little two guys turned blue. So it means that this presentation has uh, access level different than all the others. If you wanna uh, start by uh, creating presentations, uh, privately all together. You can also set the presentation access level right here in the beginning while once you start creating. Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> that is how you uh, manage your presentations in SEDAT in a big picture. Uh, tags are important and if you want you can always create private presentations if you will. Next up we're gonna go through analytics. This is something that might be too, I'm not saying hard to understand, but a bit advanced in the beginning. So if you have just started to use say that, and this sounds like, oh no, like it's way too much, don't worry. You can come back to this webinar recording and then watch this a bit later on. But first I'm gonna go through in big picture what it means to have analytics in say that and what possibilities we have there. So, as I told you before, uh, say that can be integrated to multiple different sales and marketing ecosystems. Most used is definitely Google Analytics. After that, it's the CRM systems. And then the third one might be ads, Google Ads and LinkedIn Pixels and Facebook Pixels. So different advertising tools. What you can do with the analytics, you can see how your team is using your presentation. So if you want to know which one of your sales persons is most active, that is possible through analytics. If you want to know how your present, uh, presentations are doing, so basically which one of the presentations and which one of the slides is most viewed, that you can see from the analytics. And also in sales, you most likely want to know if your material is being opened and what slides have been shown. The analytics in general work like this. So here we have SEDAT. And if you want to have the most common analytics tool in SEDAT, you add 
Google Analytics. So Google Analytics tracking code is added to say that directly from the team settings. So here, if you are an owner or admin, you can uh, go here and add the Google Analytics tracking ID. You copy paste it from Google Analytics. And then after that, it starts gathering data about the say that page views. If you have used Google Analytics, you probably know how it works and this shouldn't be a big problem. But if you don't understand what you should be doing, please ask from ask uh, ask from us uh, from the chat or then check our support page. Here, if you click on the little uh, question mark and go to support side, you can just write here analytics and you will find all the information on how to set up your Google Analytics in Salem and how to do that through Tag Manager and so on. <clears throat> now, if you are not interested in Google Analytics, but all the everything else, uh, you can have different other kind of analytics tools in your SEDA. How do you do that? You have them in your SEDA through Google Tag Manager. If Google Tag Manager is not something you're familiar with, it is basically a, co a container of other analytics tools or tracking pixels. So you basically have this container added to your SEDA, and then the container itself has different other uh, tracking uh, pixels and so on. Google uh, Tag Manager is added to your SEDA team from the same place as the Google Analytics. So theme settings and general settings. Now, what you can do with Google Tag Manager is that you can, for example, start doing marketing to people who are viewing your presentations. How? Well, if you're uh, doing advertising on Facebook or LinkedIn, you know that you have a Facebook pixel or meta pixel, and then you also have LinkedIn pixel. The pixels are tracking your site visitors. Now, in this case, site is say that presentation. And how to add it? You first have to add the tracking pixel to your Google Tag Manager. And after that, it starts gathering data about your presentation viewers. Uh, you need to have, I think, usually it is like 100 people in the audience. So basically 100 different people looking at your presentations before you can start doing retargeting to this specific audience. It will create a, a new audience or yes, audience is the correct word, I think. Uh, it will create a new audience of these people who are looking at your presentations. And after that, you can start doing the re, uh, retargeting. This can be useful if you have long sales cycles and you want to be on top of your customer, customer's mind all the time. Now, what else you can do? I told, told you about advertising. I told you about analytics. Then we can go to the most simple thing that you have uh, in say that about analytics. It is the in-app analytics. So when you share a say that presentation with a link, you will know how many times this link has been opened. Usually, this amount of information is enough for salespeople. So when they send out a meeting minutes material, when they send an offer to a client, they usually need to know if your material was opened. You can see it in say that straight next to the shared link. This is also something that I uh, dig in deeper in the basic user training. And also you can find articles about this on our support site. So please go there to see how it all works. Uh, your salespeople can see it next to the link if the link has been opened. And if they know how to name their links right, they will also know who opened it. And if they don't have time, usually salespeople don't have time because they have to be selling all the time. Uh, they can also receive email notifications every time a link is being opened. So if I create a new link, uh, name the link correctly so I know who I send it to and send it to a customer. Then the customer opens the link two weeks later, I will immediately get an email not notification that, hey, Emma, your presentation for example, sales deck company X has been opened with a link note sent to Paulus. So then I will know which presentation and who opened it. And then I can just grab my phone and call the guy and say that, hey, you're ready to start cooperating. 
that is the simplest uh, piece of analytics you easily can get from SEDAT. But then if you want to know more detailed information, have analytics there attached to your SEDA team, and then you can see even slide specific views. So how many unique page views did your presentation get, which slides were most interesting and so on. Uh, this can be interesting to your salespeople, but I know it's a bit inaccessible. So most salespeople don't have access to Google Analytics, but usually just ask them that, do you really need to know which slides are you just happy to know uh, which one of the presentations was opened? All right, then uh, about automations. So we say that we have a native integration with Pipe Drive. That is the last thing that I'm going to talk about. And first, I'm going to talk about uh, all the other automations you can create with Sayrat. If Sapir a is not uh, familiar with you, it basically is a tool with what you can create automations without having basically any technical knowledge. Even I can use say uh, Sapir easily, and I think I learned how to do it in like 15 minutes, even though I do not have any history in tech, other than being a sales guy and customer success manager, but it doesn't count. All right, but what you can do with Zapier or native uh, integrations, what you what should you automate? Well, of course, if you don't have anything uh, that you would like to automate, there's no processes that feel like they could be automated, then don't do anything. But if you have a feeling that, hey, every single day I am duplicating the same presentation, I'm adding the same information, of course, different names, for example, for a client, and then I'm sending the link, I'm clicking on the same buttons every day, then you might need to automate that process. Here's an example of how it works. Uh, in your CRM, you can, for example, put a deal to a different stage. So from a meeting to proposal, that can be a trigger. Once that trigger happens, it sends information to Sapir, and then Sapir sends the same information to Sedat to be, for example, duplicate a presentation, which name is a offer template. Then it does that. And after that, it can even fill out some specific spots on that offer that are in your CRM. So for example, you have a name, you have a price, you have a company name in your CRM attributes. It can automatically find them and then add them to the Sailor presentation on the right places. After that, Sailor will create a link, so a shared link that you would send to the customer and then bring that uh, link back to, for example, your Teams or Slack, or then back to the CRM. Uh, this is something that is quite easy to do with Sapir. Uh, if you have never heard about Sapir before, please create a free account there and just look around. Select say that to be the uh, first app that you want to integrate with, for example, HubSpot, and then see all the possibilities that you have there. Our customer, uh, Mikko, has created this same kind of process himself. So he has a form, HubSpot form, on his website. A client fills it in. It brings the information to HubSpot. After that, HubSpot tells to say that, that hey, duplicate a presentations, uh, presentation, fill out this information that comes from the form, and then bring me back the link. And then say that does that, and Mikko says a tons of time of not having to go to say that and duplicate and fill out the presentations, him, presentations himself. It is simple as that. These are just some of the uh, things that you can do with the automations. Uh, one of the things that we have done is by automatic, automatically sending out guides. So we have a lot of guides on our website and our uh, users and anybody else can try to, you can even go and find our guides. And once you uh, want to get the guide to yourself, it will come as a sales presentation. I will not. None of our salespeople are not. Our CEO, CEO is not going to go themselves and click on, hey, duplicate this link and send this to customer X. No, automation does that. And I don't see any reason why you shouldn't do all of that in that because it's so easy. And also, at the same time, the guides, the proposals, the everything that you send are visually pleasing and centrally managed. All right. 
uh, as I told you a bit before that we have a native integration with Pipedrive. So if you're using Pipedrive, uh, please contact us and tell us to give you some more information or then listen to me right now, whatever you like. Uh, it is very easy to create automations with say, through SayDat and Pipedrive. What you can do is basically everything that I just told you that you can do with Sapir too. So you can automate your sales material creation process. You can uh, send guides to people automatically. But then, of course, we have something special for Pipedrive users, and it's meeting notes. So in say that you can write meeting notes while you're presenting. So for example, right now, I could be telling you, this was interesting. And now, I change the slide to here and it tracks what I'm showing. So this meeting notes part of the slide can be automatically added to your pipe type deal. So usually if you're a sales guy, you might forget to add the notes to your CRM because that's just, I know it's something, it's just uses forget it sometimes. And no problem if you have pipe drive and you have created the integration with say that all those notes that you write during your sales meetings are automatically moving to the CRM. Now, how to do that? I can guide you through it. Contact us through, through chat or just send me an email and I will help you out. But if you rather do everything by yourself, you can also find all this information our, on our support page. So scroll down and click Pipe Drive integration and automation. And here's specific uh, guidance on how to do that, how to connect it and how to use it and all the, all the answers to your questions. Now, I think we have now gone through everything that we had for today. Uh, if you still have some questions, if I didn't answer all the things that you had in mind, uh, call their support page, try to find the answer from there, or contact us through chat or me directly by email or on LinkedIn, if you will. Uh, welcome to our next webinars and webinars that we have already held. Uh, I, ha I have been advertising our user training webinar in this webinar for quite many times, and it is because it is very useful, just as is this. So you will find all our webinars always on our website. So if you go to our website and click on say that Academy, you can find all the uh, webinars that are upcoming and also the old webinars that have a recordings on them from there. I want to, I guess I'm I'm done with this. Uh, thank you for watching this and I hope it was helpful and I hope to see you on our next webinars. Thanks.